All right, a very welcome to this new episode of Off to 7000 Islands. My name is Eric and I live here with my wife in the Philippines. We are living in the province and our part of town, our little town, ran out of water. And this is the reason why we make this video. We're gonna talk about our water setup, water tower, all this kind of stuff. Uh, we're gonna also talk about water heating, pool, uh, all this kind of stuff and rainwater collection and what our thoughts on it and what we plan for the future. I talked with quite a few people about it and actually my brother-in-law does build lots of water systems. We're gonna show one also here on the channel at some point but I'm not getting around of editing it. So that's the topic and let's get into the video. Yeah, and as I said, we have now for three months no rain. Last week we had two thunderstorms, but that's it. That was all of it. And it's a very dry summer. And the last dry summer I think was 2016. So it doesn't happen very often, but this part of town is out of water. There's other places, for example, our hotel, which is outside the city. We have a little hotel that's getting water from a different source, a different well. This has no problem. And it's a bit annoying when you see other people, you know, wasting water and washing their cars every day and all this kind of stuff. And you have no water. But what we have is a water tower which can fit, I think, 300 liters. You can see it here. Uh, it's quite big and we are only two people. The problem is that water tower also needs to last for our rental property and there are another, I think, 10 people living from it. And then with washing and everything, it's not enough. So we bought another water barrel we put uh, there just to have some water for washing and for you know giving the dog a shower and all this kind of stuff just to not run out of water because water comes irregular so they need to ration the water and then they turn it on random times they say in the morning but sometimes it comes sometimes it's in the afternoon you never know but that's the situation at the moment and our rental property as well, they are saving water. And some weeks when it's very bad, then we actually, yeah, well, we have a hotel with showers and everything. And we also let the people who are rent this uh, store place and some of them are living there. It's a commercial property, but some of them are not from here. So they stay during the week here, uh, they shower. Uh, in our hotel then <laughs> yeah so that's um, the challenge so and how we want to get around it is basically how we get around it in our hotel the hotel has also the possibility of drill drilling a well that's possible but we don't use that at the moment we are using it from a well up the mountain and the pipe comes down in the hotel and we're on a slope, so it runs down and has a tank in the bottom, quite a big storage tank. Uh, I think it's two or three thousand liters. It runs in there and when it's full, we have a solar pump, which pumps it up the hill again into a water tower, which can store about half, half of that water, which can be downstairs. And then we have enough water pressure for all the rooms in the hotel. And when we want to extend it, we need to build another water tower though. Um, but yeah, that's basically the setup there. And it's solar power, so it saves quite a bit of battery because pumps use a fair amount. So uh, I showed that in another video. I have uh, a video um, linked somewhere here as well. Uh, if I don't forget, I write it down in the comments below, but it's like uh, getting ready for the main season. There's a solar panel in the thumbnail. <laughs> but yeah, that's the setup in the hotel and it works really, really well. And one of the regulations here is actually that you're not allowed to put 
a pump directly on your water line from the which comes from the street and that's for a few reasons so first of all that you don't pump away other people's water because everyone needs water and when it's not enough the infrastructure here is not always great um, then it would not be fair if you have the biggest pipe you pump most of the water away the other thing is some people don't have um, I don't know what it's called like in English so a valve which stops the water from running back so if people have a pool and you have a pump and the water you you might pump the neighbor's pool empty and then you use it in your shower that wouldn't be good so <laughs> there's a, a few reasons why you don't should not put the pump directly on the line but yeah people do it I have seen it uh, around so but it's not very smart and I think also a bit selfish but yeah so we are keeping to the rules and we want to put this system in our house as well so we want to put under our water tower a tank you know build a tank out of concrete and then put waterproof lining inside to just have when the water pressure is not high to have still it filling up and then take a little pump to just pump it up into the tower so we have good water pressure um, for the house and then we, we are not depending on the water pressure in the line and we have more water storage so we can store more water so when the water is on it can fill up everything and we don't need to improvise as we do right now so that's the plan and my brother-in-law actually does water systems here in the Philippines different things and uh, I will I will show you that what he does for villages so he's a contractor he's a builder and he does that so he can set that up calculate that well what pump and all this kind of stuff so and maybe we do it actually solar <coughs> yeah I have the windows open because it's so hot and I thought there's a bit of a breeze but yeah you hear the tricycles and the roasters and stuff like this what's around here <laughs> but I didn't want to go outside because it's even hotter and yeah I don't want to always run the air condition as well so but let's continue with the rainwater collection and I've been talking with people who have it and some people who got rid of it again because one of the problem is that when it's raining you don't really need it so right now we need it but we don't really have rain so that would also be very quickly empty and here water is very cheap at least here in the province water is very cheap so buying a set up making new plumbing to use it maybe for your toilet and things like this would be good for the environment no doubt but financially if you can do it do it but uh, it's not very very practical because we have 50% of the year we have a monsoon season so it rains enough and then you don't need it for for watering the plants when it's raining and if you don't set it up for flushing toilet and this kind of stuff then it's no use and the other thing is what kind of barrel you're using is also you need to use a dark barrel I saw some people who had see-through or white barrels and then it builds up algae and you have mosquitoes breeding in it and all this kind of stuff so and not the best thing to store water long here it needs to have a lot of circulation and rainwater storage doesn't have that on average and a system to build that up to flush the toilets and stuff I would really love to have it I would prepare when we build a house I would set it up like this but I would probably not buy already a pump and get everything ready for it uh, which is not like just laying the pipes in the wall for example for it but not doing the rest because it's quite expensive and water is usually not an issue except when there's a really dry summer 
So that's my thoughts on that. It's good for the environment. But I think even better is a solar system for the environment and for your purse. So if you can run your pump or your, your air cons, especially your air cons from solar, then that's much better. And saves a lot of money even here in the Philippines where electricity doesn't cost as much as like in, in Germany at least where I can compare it. And the last thing I want to talk about it is solar water heating systems because you you could set that up easily um, with your know, black pipes on your roof basically or you buy a system with a pump you know like you can buy that in city hardware or yeah hardware stores have that usually um, at least in their catalog and you can order that but costs a fair amount and again one of the problems is that uh, so I had a few people who, who have it for their pool. So I asked them for their pool and why they only have it for their pool is because in those solar setups for water, there is actually a bacteria build up. And you know, the water doesn't, in, in, in the cities it gets chlorinated like Manila, but here in the province it doesn't get chlorinated. So. You need to be careful. We have quite good water. I tested it with the test strips, but when it sits in the sun for a long time, well, and drinking, no, don't drink the water here out of the tub <laughs> by drinking water. So it's very limited for what you can use it. Of course, in the pool, it's practical because you have chlorine or some other thing in your pool and you can cycle that through as a separate system. And then you have a warmer pool the thing is we live about 50 meters away from the ocean and we have a seaside resort with a beach like here in our house the the water is there i can see it from my office i'm looking on the ocean and then uh, in our hotel we have actually part of the beach in front of it so it's fantastic it's always warm the water it's it's great so i don't really need a pool if we have our own house we just you know renting this house here uh, uh it's or it belongs to the family of my wife but it's not really ours our our hours <laughs> um then we will definitely think about it more and maybe prepare ready the setup for it and then we you know save again because for the environment, if everyone uses less water, uses rainwater, heats without electricity uh, and all this kind of stuff, then it's much better. Uh, but it comes with a price. And those water heaters, like those little boiler things, which you can connect to your shower and to your sink and this kind of stuff. If you can run them on solar, well, then you actually save a lot of money and it, it kills your bacteria as well because it boils the water to quite a high degree often. So that's the thoughts for this. Maybe you found it helpful. Maybe you've been thinking about it. I know there's other experts who will disagree with me. It also always depends on the region, but we here in the province came to the conclusion that rainwater collection is not really a practical thing. We have it though in the farm. In the farm we have it as emergency. So there's a few houses in the farm. They collect water, for example, for the cows and things like that. So if it's dry like this, it's better. And yeah, um, we have uh, this kind of setup. So in some places it is worth it, but for your residential place, it's often not really worth it. For a farm with greenhouses or livestock, it can be worth it depending maybe you have a well or a river or something in your farm and then well, <laughs> then you don't need it as well so that's the kind of uh, things just wanted to talk about it uh, please give it this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more and we see you in the next one uh, it's very hot here now I need some chocolate cake my wife baked some chocolate cake you can also buy in our cafe, but I will have a piece now and we see you in the next one.
Thank you.